Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted was a game that would go on to change the FNAF series forever. Being Steel Wolves' first FNAF project, this would bridge the gap between the old era of the series and the new era. But since even before its release, there's been something on my mind. In the source code for Scott's website, there were some random strings of text that led to some early black and white Help Wanted images. And we all thought that was it, until we found some odd letters and numbers that gave us this image. This one was different. This one felt more real and less recognisable. It turns out it was actually an image of an animatronic endoskeleton from Showbiz Pizza. And this was just one photo of a whole slideshow that would eventually appear in the prize count television screen. Why were these here? That was the question I had on my mind. And over four years later, I think I finally have an answer. The Mimic is a character that I have talked about multiple times on the channel already. It's a huge discussion point in the community currently, and it's not something everybody loves. The character and idea originates from the recent Tales from the Pizzaplex books, and there have been a lot of debates regarding its canonicity. But, whether you like it or not, I think this debate is about to be settled, and I think the Mimic is a real thing in the games, along with the books it stars in. What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to my brain. That's right, what you're watching right now is essentially a compilation of all of my thoughts and questions and answers and ideas all thrown together into one big Mimic video, because we love a good Mimic video, don't we? I just read through the nearly released Tiger Rock Tales, and I have a lot to say. First thing is, this book is a wild roller coaster of emotions. I was in shock, then I was laughing hysterically, then I was screaming. And that was just one story. The Monty Within was what I call the kids at play effect, a story that is so hilariously horrifying. And Bleeding Heart was more like the Sergio's Lucky Day effect, one that makes me appreciate having smooth, healthy skin. But secondly, this book gives clarification on two major things that we really needed. And because of it, I am now a firm believer that Tails is in the games again. So before we talk about that, let me make sure we are all up to speed on the Mimic and potentially what its problems are. The Mimic is an endoskeleton and it has an artificial intelligence called Mimic 1. The AI was programmed to study human interaction and replicate it. It learned to play hide and seek and then it learned to be aggressive. Since then, the Mimic Endo has been hiding in various different animatronic costumes and brutally slaughtering anyone it sees. In the Pizzaplex, the AI was spread system-wide and the endoskeleton was brought down into the Pizza Place tourist attraction. So those are the five or six main points you really need to know. The main theory and the way this changes the games is that whether it is a parallel or they are the same characters, this definitely correlates with Glitch Trap and Burn Trap. It actually learned to be aggressive through its creator, who crushed its skull while tear streams flowed from his eyes and he frothed at the mouth. If you take a close look at Glitch Trap, you can actually see remnants of this on the suit. While in the pizza place, the Endo murders a lot of people by playing hide and seek and mimicking the voices of innocent people. This is something we directly hear from Glitch Trap in Help Wanted and in Prankster. Not only this, Glitch Trap also appears to mimic a vast history of Freddy's, including the missing children's incident as seen in the Pizza Party minigame. The mimic's arm is said to curve just like what we see in Burn Trap, Burn Trap ain't his canon name, and the Mimic 1 program has always been pretty attached to a very specific animal. A tiger. Okay, okay, I get it. It's it's not a rabbit, so it's just a parallel. There's nothing to say that the mimic in the books is connected even slightly to William Afton. Seriously, I've been in that position with that thought process before. But I'm actually going to tell you why this doesn't matter. The way that the AI got into the Pizzaplex systems was because it was being used as a storyteller program. It would always be able to generate new stories, and Fazbear Entertainment saw that as profit. The supposed storyteller was an unknown character inside the storyteller's tree that would be connected to the rest of the Pizzaplex through its roots. 
And as I mentioned in a previous video, this strange mural in Princess Quest seems to symbolise the tree next to the castle theatre with the Mimic 1 virus inside. The mysterious character inside the storyteller's tree is actually rather interesting though. It's the tiger I mentioned before, and it's here where I am going to be talking about the new stories and recent findings. Tiger Rock is the name of this animatronic tiger, and our protagonist steps into a VR booth while the storyteller tree is still up. Turns out this reality shows the supposed Pizzaplex 10 years in the future, and the animatronics are strangely realistic. To get to the point, this tiger pulls on limbs very hard and likes to play hide and seek. I think that's enough to tell us it's mimic infected. Anyway, the protagonist wakes up and goes home, but over the course of a few days see some weird things. An owl, a cat, and a clock. All with one common denominator. They all have one green eye and one blue eye. It turns out he was actually still stuck in the VR game, a little bit like under construction. Except, in this story, he manages to escape. He goes home, sees a normal owl, gets his limbs ripped off by Tiger Rock. Wait, wait. Yeah, that was a surprising ending, I can't lie. But if you think about it, it actually all makes sense. It's all one big game of hide and seek and classic mimic limb pulling. The most important part of this story is that Tiger Rock was hiding as multiple different things that would all be natural in their environment. From the ending, we know that owls are common in the neighborhood and Tiger Rock disguised as an owl. He didn't disguise as a cat in school, he disguised as a clock. It's all dependent on the environment that the Mimic is in. So now, let's look at Glitch Trap. We've known for a while that the Mimic virus was in an animatronic tiger's head, so a lot of people refused to believe that it could look like Glitch Trap. But if you think about it, this story confirms that it doesn't even matter what animal or time-related object it is. It just has to look natural within its environment. And what looks like second nature in Freddy's pizzerias? A killer in a yellow bonnie costume. If you want to know what the true form of the mimic looks like, look no further than Princess Quest. It spreads and reproduces like a virus, like a cancer cell, something I think Under Construction was trying to tell us. It may not be a direct confirmation that Glitchtrap is the Mimic 1 virus, but at the very least, it gives me comfort that he can be. So, Mimic 1 and Glitchtrap seem to fit together quite nicely. What about the other half, the Mimic and Burntrap? Well, the big concern with these two is that one of them is an endoskeleton, and the other looks like another descendant of Springtrap with Glamrock parts, Scraptrap parts, and rotten human flesh. Clearly they aren't the same. Yet. You see, in this epilogue, we get some pretty big drops. Basically, in each epilogue, we get to see the Mimic Endoskeleton in the pizza place as he torments and slaughters teenagers. In this epilogue, we are told there are Springlock suits down here, and we also witness what could be the most chilling death so far. Kelly jumps in a suit to hide, and the Mimic follows. That's right, it gets inside the suit, and you know where this is going. Basically, the epilogue leaves us with the Mimic wearing Kelly as a flesh suit, Ennard style. Now, this is big. The endoskeleton now has organics, and it's starting to look a lot more like what we know as Burn Trap. And with at least one more epilogue left to go, there's definitely a possibility that he will find some Scrap Trap parts to wear. We are in the pizza place after all. It just leaves me with one burning question. No pun intended. Let's say all of this is correct. Let's say Glitchtrap is the Mimic program, and let's say Burntrap is a brutal endoskeleton. What does that mean for Afton? Because here's the thing, we all assumed these two were Afton, but when you look back at the games, there is nothing to say that this is the case. So, is he dead or is he alive? If he is dead, gone for good, where is his body? If he is still alive, is he a part of the Mimic, or is he somewhere else? Personally, I see three possibilities. The first possibility is that this entire time, he has been sitting in the pizza place, going through his ultimate custom nightmare. The Mimic will find his body in the epilogues and wear the Scrap Trap suit, and that will make him Burn Trap, with Afton possessing him. While it's a cool thought, I don't think this will be the case, because then it makes the man in room 1280 
utterly pointless. So, the second possibility is that the events of the man in room 1280 did actually happen, along with the rest of the stick trade stingers. This means the Fazbeth frights would be canon. Frailty can be explained by Eleanor, and the last time we would ever see Afton is when he and his agony amalgamation drowns in the lake. This would also be somewhat satisfying, but remember the puppet also goes down with him. So how come the puppet's mask is in the blob in Security Breach? Well, the only other possibility I can see is that Afton is still possessing Mimic Glitch Trap and Mimic Burn Trap, which gives them more reason to look like Spring Bonnies. But if that's the case, then what is even the point of the Mimic plotline? So here's the thing. I think that the whole Mimic debate can be settled. Looking at the stories and the epilogues that we have been getting, it's just becoming more and more clear that this is all slotting in nicely with the game's timeline. The thing that we have to think about going forward is how Afton fits into this. Is Glitchtrap just a fan of Afton's work, mimicking his moves and controlling people that look like his children? Or is the Mimic 1 virus quite literally in Afton's control? Let me know what you think below and I might feature your comment in an upcoming theory review video. So make sure you subscribe for that and I hope to see you then. See you later.